Welcome to the Zone Boxing Show presented by AutoZone. I'm Chris Mannix, joined by the junior middleweight champion, Sergio Mora. And Sergio, we have an interesting fight in the cruiserweight division. That's right. Cruiserweight, not often known as one of boxing's glamour divisions. Well, it is getting a popularity boost in the form of Zerto Ramirez and Joe Smith Jr., who will fight at the Cosmopolitan on Saturday night. So, Sergio, this is an important fight for both these guys. Zerto, a former 168-pound champion. Uh, Joe Smith, a former 175-pound champion. Both of these guys are coming off losses. Who is this fight more important for? I think it's more important for Surdo Ramirez because after his last cancellation with weight issues with Gabe Rosado, his loss against Bevo, he's almost been inactive one year. This is very important and crucial for Surdo Ramirez to make a splash at a new weight division. Like you said, I mean, he was a natural light heavyweight. I mean, he was a contender and now he's a cruiserweight. It's a weight station, like you like to say. But if he can get a name on his resume against Joe Smith Jr., who's always given uh, a champions a tough fight. He has that hard right hand. He's ready to hurt anybody. He's only lost to some of the best and better, B.F. and Bevo and Barrera. So there's no shame in his losses. But this is kind of a crossroad fight, an elite level crossroads fight in a cruiserweight division that doesn't get that many eyeballs. So very important for Surdo to prove that he can still be a, a, a popular name in a division that doesn't bring much eyeballs, but he could still, you know, be a, a ticket seller. You know, he could still he could still get the big names and maybe still get uh, down to light heavyweight if he dedicates himself. Who knows? That's another question. But very important for Surdo not only not only look good, make a splash for Duda against a world title challenger and someone that not that many people dominate or let alone stop. In, in Joe Smith Jr. So if Ramirez can come back and stop a tough guy with cinder block hands like Joe Smith Jr., hey, he's back. Yeah, I think there's no question it is a crossroads fight because the winner could be in line for a world title shot at Cruiserweight in the next fight. The loser, I'm not sure exactly where they go. Now, I agree with you that it is important for Zerto Ramirez. He went 5-0 and at light heavyweight before challenging Dimitri Bivol and was completely outclassed. I don't believe there is a return to light heavyweight in Zerto's future because the last time he tried to do that, he missed weight by like 10 pounds. So I don't think he's going back to 175 pounds anytime soon. And if he can't beat someone like Joe Smith, I'm not exactly where sure where he's going to turn. But I do think it's more important for Joe Smith, who's a little bit older, 34 years old. He has been more inactive, has not fought since the first couple of months of 2022 when he was destroyed by Archer Betterbeev. That was not a competitive fight. If you're Joe Smith, are you really looking to be a gatekeeper at 175? Do you really want to go back down and challenge you know, some of the young guns in the light heavyweight division? I think for Joe Smith, it's win or else your career might be over. I think this could be it for Joe Smith. So I think it's more important for Joe Smith to get a win in a fight like this. That being said, who do you favor in a fight like this? Because both these guys have strengths. Zerto is an active puncher. Joe Smith is a heavy-handed puncher. Who do you like in this fight? Listen, anytime you're dealing with Joe Smith, he's always hurting guys. Even in his losses, he's able to, 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 to get guys' attention and respect. With Bebo, he was dominated he was dominated in that fight Bevo controlled every action but towards the end of the fight Joe Smith hurt Bevo he shook him he rocked him with a glancing shot to the temple this is a man who can hurt you with one punch Ramirez he gets lethargical at times he, he's not the fastest on his hands and his feet and his upper body movement so he's there to be hit he's the type of guy he has Mexican style he comes forward but the higher you go up in weight division that Mexican style turns against you so it's speed that's gonna be uh, beneficial for Ramirez and footwork. If he doesn't bring that to the table, Joe Smith will hurt, not can, will hurt Ramirez in this fight. And I think if Ramirez gets hurt, I don't think he makes it out of it because these, you know, one punch get ended with Joe, when it comes to Joe Smith Jr. Yeah, I think Ramirez's activity, his in-ring activity is going to be something to watch. Uh, in the fights that Joe Smith has lost, he has been bothered by activity. You look at Dimitri Bivol and his activity, specifically with his jab. Uh, even against Maxime Vlasov, who Joe Smith beat to win the light heavyweight title. When Joe Smith struggled in that fight, it was because of Vlasov's activity. He was able to move forward, throw a lot of punches, and Joe Smith really didn't have many answers for that. Where Joe has his strengths is, you know, one-shot power punching, unorthodox, you know, kind of mixing it up in an ugly way. Uh, I think if Ramirez can be as active 
as we saw him in every fight at light heavyweight, except for the one uh, against Dimitri Bivol. I think he's going to give himself a great chance to win. I think he's going to overwhelm Joe Smith and not allow Joe to throw those bombs that you know Joe needs to be successful in a fight like this. Two All things, right, though, man. Let's, Two things. Though. Go ahead. Hold on, real quick. Two things. Uh, Vlasov is a mover. Dimitri Bivo, a mover. So Ramirez doesn't have the fast footwork. And uh, when it comes to uh, uh, Joe Smith Jr., he punches in between the shots. He doesn't wait for you to be done. So I think the activity is going to work against Ramirez. It's going to be a dangerous fight for Ramirez. He doesn't have the footwork, and he doesn't have the speed to actually keep him off. So there's going to be a, 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 a fight where they're both going to exchange, they're both going to land, and who takes the bigger shot? I, I agree he doesn't have the footwork, but he does come forward. And when he does come forward, he throws a lot of punches. The Bivol fight was not indicative of the fighter that Gilberto Ramirez wants to be. Now, a lot of that was because Bivol was great. He's a pound-for-pound pound type of guy. But when Ramirez is at his best, he's coming forward, and he's throwing a bunch of punches. And I think Joe Smith's going to have a problem with that if Gilberto Ramirez can fight like that in this particular fight. All right, so last weekend, we had Canelo Alvarez reassert himself at the top of the 168-pound division, defending all four of his super middleweight titles in a one-sided defeat of Jermel Charlo. It was a disappointing performance by Jermel Charlo, who I thought never really looked for opportunities to, to, to win. To me, it looked like Charlo was just trying to survive in that fight and wasn't looking to win that fight. But it got me thinking, Sergio, is there anyone between 154 and 168 pounds that can compete with Canelo Alvarez. We know at 175, Dimitri Bivol is there, and he's always going to be a tough fight for Canelo. But is there anybody in and around Canelo's weight classes right now from 154 on up that can be competitive with Canelo? Yes, La Bandera Roja, David Benavidez, a Mexican monster at 168. He's going to be bigger than Canelo, Canelo, longer, stronger, faster. So normally when you have size, you give up speed. David Benavides has some of the fastest hands, if not the fastest hands in explosive combinations at super uh, middleweight. So he has everything against Canelo, plus he's hungry for this big opportunity. He's had the big wins against the former title challengers in Durrell and Caleb Plant. And he, he is ascending, man. He's waiting for this opportunity. He's waiting for that big cash out fight. And this is it. This is the moment that he needs it. And not only that, Canelo wants to fight Cinco de Mayo weekend of next year. Perfect fight, the Mexican monster versus the, the star of Mexico. This is gonna be a very, very difficult fight for Canelo if it happens, because if you're gonna beat Canelo, you need a jab and you need speed and you need footwork. Benavides has a little bit of everything. And I think if in every letter, every category, uh, uh, Benavides beats him, I think that's the one to beat. I would just like to say first that come December 1st, we're not going to be talking about David Benavidez against Canelo. Oh, there you go. Because Demetrius Andrade there is going to beat him. <laughs> Demetrius Andrade is going to beat David Benavidez. Uh, the undefeated two-division world champion Demetrius Andrade, who has been waiting for this opportunity, is going to beat David Benavidez. But let's play along with this. And let's say David Benavidez does get the Canelo fight in May of next year. I agree with everything you said about what David Benavidez has been up until this point. He throws a lot of punches. He's got a lot of power. He is a very big 168-pounder. But you, the guys you mentioned that David Benavidez has beaten, the guys with uh, names on his resume, Anthony Durrell and Caleb Plant. The common thread between those two guys is neither one is known for his power. So David Benavidez probably went into both those fights not really worried about what was coming back. What Mike about David Tyson, Lemieux? What about David Lemieux? That's David Lemieux heavy, was good, but David Lemieux was washed. David Lemieux was washed. David Lemieux was... That was David Lemieux. I think it was his last fight. At least one of his last fights. I haven't checked that in a while. But David Lemieux was at the very end of his career, and he was a blown-up middleweight. So... Uh, yeah, I'm not trying to disrespect David Lemieux, but David Lemieux, smaller fighter, coming up in weight back in his career. I don't apply that to all this. Uh, Mike Tyson had a great line. Everyone's got a game plan until they get punched in the face. Well, <laughs> Canelo Alvarez punches as hard as anybody at super middleweight. And I just don't believe that Benavidez is going to come in on Canelo throwing as many punches as he had against some of these other opponents. I think he's going to be leery of what is coming back from Canelo Alvarez like virtually every other opponent that Canelo has faced. You look at some of the top guys that Canelo has gone up against. You know, guys like, you know, Callum Smith, who had a world title. Billy Joe Saunders had a world title. Caleb Plant 
had a world title. His most recent couple of fights with John Ryder and with uh, Jermel Charlo. These guys do not throw with Canelo. They don't throw with them because they know what's coming back. Only two fighters over the last five or six years that Canelo has faced have thrown with him. One is Gennady Golovkin and one is Dimitri Bivol. Now you're telling me David Benavidez is going to be throwing punches like Golovkin and Bivol? Look, maybe he will, but I got to see it to believe it first, Sergio. I got to believe that that version of David Benavidez is going to show up and do and fight that style against Canelo Alvarez. I think uh, David Benavides is faster, more explosive, especially in combinations on both those fighters, on Bevo and anyone else, and Golovkin, certainly. He's not he, fast. Faster yes, than Bevo. Absolutely. Like, we're going faster than Bevo. 100%. David Benavides is probably the fastest super middleweight, aside from uh, Caleb Plant, maybe. But as far as the explosive combinations, he has, he has, he has a perfect, perfect frame. He's tall, but he doesn't have wide shoulders. So he has short shoulders, and he punches in a little square right here, which is exactly what you do with Canelo, who's going to be shorter stature. So he's going to be right there in front of him, and then he digs down to the body. For being a six foot two fighter, uh, Benavides, he digs down to the body, comes up with uppercuts, and then he rips apart with seven, eight, nine nine punch combinations you can't punch in between shots like that especially if you're already a a, a seasoned uh, veteran like canelo who has double the amounts of benavides uh, th this is a as dangerous amount of fights fight as you're saying yes double the amount of fights you're saying yeah. uh all right well we, we keep hearing that about you know canelo you know being worse for wear by the way you were one of those people that said that Canelo was slowing down. Did you see a slowed down version of Canelo in that fight against Jermel Charlo? Absolutely not, but I don't think we saw the Charlo that we're accustomed to seeing. We didn't see him. Now, at the there's press a reason for that, though, Sergio. The there's conference. a reason we, we don't didn't see him at the win. We didn't see him, and we certainly didn't see him at the fight. We didn't see him. Everybody at all. looks different when they face Canelo Alvarez. Caleb Smith looks different. Billy Joe Saunders oh, looks different. Caleb Plant looks different. Everybody looks different when they fight Canelo because it's one thing to just jab him and try to beat him on the outside, but throwing right hands requires risk. Going to the body requires risk, and very few fighters are willing to do it. That's going to be the key for David Benavidez. He's going to get hit with something during that fight. And David Benavidez has been knocked down before. David Benavidez has been hurt before. He has never fought anyone with the power and the speed of Canelo Alvarez. So I, I'm not going to sit here and just blindly believe that Benavidez is going to go into a fight against Canelo fighting that exact same way, knowing what's coming back. When we discussed Charlo Canelo, we both thought that Charlo was going to get knocked out. Not dominated all the way to the end. We thought he was going to get knocked out. If we make predictions for this fight, I can tell you right now, someone is getting knocked out and Benavidez does hurt Canelo or get his respect. It won't be a one-sided fight. I can guarantee you that right now. When has Canelo been hurt? Not since Jose Miguel Cotto has Miguel, uh, Canelo been hurt. And he has fought some punchers, Sergio. He went 36 rounds with Gennady Golovkin. He when went 12 with Dimitri Bivol. Seen... Why, why, why do you think that, why do you believe that David Benavidez is going to be the one to hurt Canelo when Golovkin uh, and Dimitri Bivol couldn't do it? Hey, you mentioned it right there, Golovkin. We never seen Golovkin hurt until uh, Dervinchenko to the body. He has one of the best chins. No, in but boxing. Golovkin couldn't hurt him, is what I'm saying. Golovkin could not hurt Canelo, and Bivol could not hurt Canelo. Because Gol Golovkin was probably headhunting too much. He gave up on the jab when it came to the second, the rematch in the third fight, and he got a little bit older. Benavides has everything. Like I said, he has the speed, the reach, the height, the youth, the hunger, the body shots, the uppercuts, the, explo the explosive foot, everything. He has everything over Canelo. And that's what you need. That's what you're gonna need. It's someone that's gonna push you back, get you on your back. But Canelo got too accustomed coming forward, you know, hunched over with that little stance, just ripping away with body shots, not expecting anything back. Benavides has the speed and the counter-punching ability to always check you. He's always gonna be checking you after you throw shots, so Canelo's not gonna be able to get off. I'm telling you right now, that's the hardest fight for Canelo Alvarez, especially on a big weekend, and I can almost guarantee you that the Mexican monster is not gonna shy away on, on a big Cinco de Mayo weekend in Las Vegas with all eyes on him. He's gonna go out you think that's shield. a You think that's a tougher fight for Canelo than a rematch with Bevel would be, per, uh, Yes, for it is, physically. You're crazy, Bevel, you are Bevel's crazy. not gonna make it a physical fight. Bevel's gonna try to make do the exact same thing he did in the first fight, which is how you beat Canelo. That's how Mayweather beat him. That's how Bevo beat him. Behind a jab, not mixing it up with him, controlling the ring. Now, Benavidez is going to take the fight to you. It's going to be an exciting fight, and he wins a physical match between both of them. I, the size advantage, I would say. Sergio, again, 
what Benavidez has done has been incredibly impressive. There's no doubt that he is the most worthy challenger right now for Canelo Alvarez, but you can't just assume that he's going to fight the same way against Canelo. You can't assume he's just going to let his hands go when nobody lets their hands go against Canelo. Nobody does it. So why are we supposed to just blindly believe that David Benavidez is going to do it? It's not to dismiss Benavidez's talent. It's not to dismiss his power. But when you know something big is coming back, you don't throw in the same way you've thrown against other opponents. That's all I'm saying. You don't tr you don't fight the same way when you have a counterpuncher with the kind of speed and power of a Canelo Alvarez. Benavidez is faster than Canelo. He's more it's explosive. Not than Canelo. No, I don't Canelo, think anybody... Nuts. Canelo's you speed, Canelo's speed is cartoonish. Benavidez has some of the fastest hands at 160 plus north. I'm telling you right now, he's faster than Canelo, bigger, stronger, longer, younger, everything. The speed and the power is going to be on Benavidez's side. You can ask anyone that knows boxing. Ask any fighter, any champion. All right, so, all right, so, 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 hands, Benavidez. All right, so your unofficial prediction then is Benavidez, correct? I will have to study it more, and I think... Yeah, you got to be kidding me. Hold you got to be kidding on, me. Hold on, hold on. You I'll have, have to, to study it more. Me. But I, I would say Benavides is definitely a live dog, and I, we That's will see... That's not an answer. And we will see Canelo hurt in that fight. You said no one's ever hurt you. Canelo? In a trilogy with Golovkin, one of the most murderous punches, we never seen Canelo hurt. We will see nope. him hurt against Benavides. That I can promise you. No, you just said Benavides has every advantage against Canelo and you still won't pick him. So that to me speaks volumes about what you really think about this fight. All right, we got to talk about Ryan Garcia, who is coming back in December against Oscar Duarte. That's a fight you can watch on DAZN. Uh, Ryan Garcia has been off since his uh, knockout loss to Gervonta Davis earlier this year. Duarte is on an 11-fight winning streak, albeit one largely at 135 pounds. Sergio, what do you think of Garcia returning against Duarte? Man, dangerous, very dangerous. I tweeted that as soon as I found out that this fight got made. You don't match up a prospect and a, and a, and a popular fighter like Ryan Garcia who just got knocked out on the biggest stage in the biggest fashion against a monster uh, a puncher in Tank Davis. You bring him back slowly, get some knockouts under him, get his confidence back, let him get that swagger, the, con the, the, the build his fan base back, build the crowd back. You don't bring him back against a Mexican power puncher who's nonstop coming, who hides behind uh, wide shoulders, who's a, who knows how to fight small. It's gonna be a, a Mexican version of Tank Davis pretty much, Oscar Duarte, without the speed, of course, and not being a southpaw. <laughs> but Duarte does everything that, that works against Garcia's style. Garcia stands too upright. Duarte fights real low like a tank. He hides behind those wide muscular shoulders and back. He digs down to the body. He has excellent timing. This is a pick em fight, in my opinion. I don't think Ryan Garcia would be more than a two to one favorite. It'll be a 50-50 fight, especially when you're coming off the first knockout loss of your career. Dangerous fight, in my opinion. All right, I'm begging you to stop making comparisons between Oscar Duarte and Tank Davis. I'm begging you. Physique and style and how they hide behind their style. shoulders. T Tank, is, Tank is the most powerful counterpuncher in boxing today in any weight class. Tank is brilliant. That's how he got to Ryan. That's how he knocked him down, and that's how he put him out. Tank Davis is a powerful counterpuncher. I look at, at, uh, at Duarte as being almost... William Zapata-like with a little more power. He comes at you and throws a bunch of punches and tries to knock you out with his aggressiveness. A little bit, it's much different stylistically. Now, I, I do agree with you that this is not a gimme fight. A gimme fight is what we saw Ryan Garcia in two years ago when he came back to fight Emmanuel Tego. That was a fight that Ryan Garcia had almost no chance of losing and probably would have scored a big knockout if Tego didn't run around the ring for 12 rounds. Uh, this is more difficult than that. That being said, Duarte is 135 pounder and Ryan is now fighting at 140. Would I like to see Ryan Garcia fight a full-fledged 140 pounder in his first fight as a full-fledged 140 pounder? Yes. Yes, I would like to see him against an opponent like that. But for a comeback fight, uh, this is certainly more credible than other fighters in comeback fights. The guy that was rumored to be in the mix, Pedro Campa, that was who Teofimo Lopez faced in his comeback fight, his first fight at 140 pounds. This is a better fight than that because I think Duarte is more dangerous than Pedro Campa. But as Ryan Garcia starts to look at the top dogs at 140 pounds, I would have liked to have seen him fight somebody that was fully in that weight class, that was a full-fledged 140 so he could get that experience as he prepares for bigger fights. I agree with you right there, but it's not like he's been at 140 too long. Not only that, he hasn't really meshed with his 
uh, trainer, his new trainer now. He's been bouncing around from trainer to trainer. That chemistry is not there. So he's not a full-fledged 140 pounder yet, and he's not fully, totally focused and, and, and uh, uh, has a co the, the confidence in his trainer. So he's still in limbo, man. It's at 140. So right now he's primed for the picking. It doesn't matter that Duarte is coming up in weight. I mean, he's a, he's a muscular, power-punching uh, uh, lightweight at 135. Five pounds ain't going to make a difference. It's not going to make a difference with his style and his punching power. It's a dangerous, dangerous matchup and a b****y one at that. Well, it'll be good to see Ryan Garcia back December 2nd, live on DAZN. We'll be back on Saturday for Gilberto Ramirez against Joe Smith Jr. I'll be on the call with Sergio and Todd Grisham. We will see you then.